What's up everyone, how you all doing? Today I will be explaining my, well, my previous video about CDBS driver and it's, well, how it works. That's gonna be today's video. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. And it's been a while or almost one week since I've not made a video. So uh, that's because I was preparing some instruments and, well, materials for my future projects. So yeah. All of this is for you guys. And going back to my previous video about my ZVS uh, circuit, well, I inquire you to go ahead and watch it. While doing that video, I was wrapping up its, well, um, well, its connections and schematics quickly because, well, I, I wanted to show you the results of that circuit. But today, I'm gonna be explaining how it works. And also, what I've been researching, um, many YouTubers don't actually explain how this ZVS circuit works in general all they do all they do is just combining some components like capacitor resistors transistors and making it up and tada or voila it works that, that's all they do but i'll try to explain you see zvis circuits are well based on a circuit it's called an a-stable multi-vibrator well i'm not gonna tell you why it's called that but it just creates uh it's a device that creates an oscillation okay now, my ZVS circuit that I showed you, well, in my previous video, uh, is based upon this simple, well, um, schematic. It's called an A-stable multivibrator. But this, um, and also this is, uh, this schematic is a lot easier to understand than the ZVS ordinary circuit. So, let me say this. Okay, now, this circuit consists of two uh, transistors, Q1 and Q2, two capacitors, and well two resistors or optionally four resistors in this case but i replaced it with led to show you the properties now this circuit is uh, well as, as an oscillator well when two transistors get manufactured well not all uh, transistors are equally the same there is a, always an approximation but there is a difference and this is a difference one transistor switches um earlier than the other let's just say q1 switches first so this is on, this is on, while this is on, the LED will obviously light up, but while doing so, this capacitor on this side will create a high voltage inside, so that's keeping this Q1 running, and it, uh, and it, uh, well, it keeps uh, getting on for quite some time, I mean for a moment of course, while doing so, this capacitor on this side starts to build up charge inside it, which means charging. Now while this charge and reaches a um, reaches a break uh, through of this um, transistor, which is mostly about 2.7 in this case for um, this kind of BJT that I'm using, 2N222. A uh, BJT, I think it's 2.7 or 0.7. I don't remember. Anywho, this um, this capacitor well begins to discharge immediately. Now, when this um, discharge, this will get on. This circuit will get on and triggering on the other side of Q2. So this, uh, while this being uh, triggered, this Q1 turns off and Q2 will turn on. This will be on on and this will come off. While doing so, again, this uh, capacitor and this, um, well, will, while that happens, this capacitor will start slowly to get charged and that charge will eventually build up and again, but this capacitor will not deplete until this one gets depleted. So once it's fully discharged, this capacitor, once it's built up, uh, charge build up becomes charged and then it's discharged once this capacitor turns off so therefore this will trigger this q1 and it will eventually turn on while this becomes off so yeah it's a moment of getting on and off and while this leds will begin well to turn on and off on and off on and off and on on, 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 just like that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, creates an oscillation, which this circuit is. 
this circuit is an oscillator. It oscillates at a specific well frequency depending on well the capacitors. Well to make it practical of what I said, I designed a well similar schematic just like this one on my breadboard right here. This is my new breadboard that I bought a few days ago. And this breadboard is very important. And to show you how I am very enthusiastic about this electric, uh, electricity field and electronics, and this is very important. Well, as you know, all the uh, well, breadboards are essential and uh, help us to build, well, a simple electronics, from simple electronics to complex analog. Um, computations so yeah this is very important and I like it. okay guys you can see right here I connected all the components together two LEDs two well two LEDs two resistors two capacitors and two transistors I used the 2N2222 a BJT and that will suffice now oh and by the way I'm using 100 nanofarad uh, electrolytic capacitor yeah and I'll be using that so let's turn on and see what I mean by oscillation okay now I've drawn about 5 volt and you see this LED starts to blink right here you can see it it's blinking turning on and off periodically and also this LED but doesn't there's a light yeah and this LED as well lights but it's very dim I think I choose a high resistor you can see it. There's there's a light. There's a light right there. Anyway, it's oscillating, and that is because of the charging and discharging of capacitors, and there uh, and that's switching the transistors on and off, on and off, periodically. But this is not the main interesting thing. The main interesting thing is when I change the value of capacitance. For example, let us replace this capacitor with 10 microfarad and see what will happen okay now i replaced it with 10 microfarad of well both two transistor uh, two capacitors right here now let's turn it on and let's see ah you see it the led st starts to blink rapidly now it's faster that is because the smaller the charging and discharging the faster it switches the faster it starts to switch and it almost looks like a strobe and even it's kind of affecting my camera I don't know anyway it starts to switch, switch faster and the other side of the LED if you can if you guys can see it yeah maybe I shouldn't have chose this LED anyway just so yeah it starts to blink now um, as I said earlier it starts to oscillate the LED starts to blink but if we try to well uh, make a, a scope out of it if we use an oscilloscope and show us the waveform of this uh, LED it will be just like this on for a moment and then off for a moment on for a moment off for a moment just like this it will give us a square wave this uh, well, uh, well it's actually a half square wave and this is based on the voltage and time scale just like this um, and also this kind of the squarity depends on the well value of the capacitor the smaller the capacitor the shorter the gaps become uh, in right here so it becomes more like this not like a half sine wave but it's more like a it's more like a sharp edged um, voltage um, spikes and this one is similar to this one just like the other side or its counterpart it becomes square and if we decrease the capacitance of both it will become sharp just like that so yeah this is in short what a stable multi-vibrator uh, works yeah well when we compare um, transistors and MOSFETs well if you look at their data sheets uh, MOSFETs have high tolerance and high um, well efficiency and high well um, limits rather than a t uh, a um, well a BJT so we're gonna so that's why we use MOSFETs that have high tolerance and high well limit um, standards so we're gonna do that and but let me explain 
the ZVS um, schematic very quickly and will get them. If you know, in general, MOSFETs can switch quickly, uh, well, much faster than an ordinary BJTs. So we're gonna use MOSFETs. Well, that's the other reason we use MOSFETs. So yeah, let me draw a schematic of ZVS and we'll uh, I'll explain a little bit about it. Okay, this is a circuit of my well ZVS design. Here are two MOSFETs, well two diodes, two resistors, and the main component in uh, on an LC tank or LC circuit combined with well a power voltage well let's just say 12 volts. Now. The working mechanism, I almost explained it like 75% or 80%. Up to, up to, until this, I explained, I explained it. This alone, if we connect it to a high voltage, it will create an oscillation just like I said earlier. Except this oscillation is not a square wave or a sharp edge, but it is a half, half square wave. If we measure this, uh, it's called a drain. If we uh, if we will uh, measure the drain voltage using an oscilloscope, it will be just like this. Yeah, except it's uh, on. If we measure, well, except on both sides, this one and this one, it will become a half sine wave, a half sine wave, just like this. It's not. It's no longer a square wave because there's a smoothening or filtering. And by the way, um, as I said uh, in my previous videos, an LC circuit creates a sine wave if we measure the well the circuit voltage. Now, when that <coughs> and I also explained that uh, such sine waves dissipate very uh, quickly due to the parasitic um, resistance inside the wire because the resistance is almost everywhere. So, because of that. Um, we can't sustain that kind of uh, huge spike of voltage generated by the inductor. So, what we do is, there's a frequency generated by the resonance, or we call it resonance frequency, and also there's a frequency produced by the MOSFETs. Now, what we try to do is, try to, well, match them. If we make the two uh, frequencies, the frequency of this one, of this two, the frequency generated by, well, uh, when we calculated, uh, well, according to the formula, this and this frequency, if we make it equal, we can sustain the huge voltage spike generated by this LC tank. That is the point of the oscillation. So, once, look, for example, if we see this bump right here, this bump will generate a spike right here. will generate a spike let's just say this um if we probe the inductor this will become the spike if we um apply this only this one this spike uh, this voltage spike is about to dissipate so we need another um uh, well bump or to restart it so once this uh, is on this is because this will become the second one so this is about to dissipate and we add another um, surge or an another oscillation which creates us this sine wave. The reverse sine wave will be created because we are applying it. And then once this side dissipates, we'll come to this one. And that will generate us this. And just like that, we'll create a continuous spiked well, um, voltage sine wave this is pure sine wave that's why um we we must uh, match the frequency of the mosfets and the lc tank and by the way these two uh, inductors their jobs are just filtering the well massive voltage inside them and yeah this is how the zvs circuit works i guess and i hope that you understood how this ZVS uh, circuit, uh, well, it's case driven, and how to build well, your own oscillator. And by the way, this oscillation, this oscillator is very important to do future jobs and future projects. And I hope you understood it. And if you like this video and if you like me, you can subscribe and share and comment anything you like below. Well, copy, uh, copy and paste as they say it.
so yeah thankful i'm thankful that you listen and um understood this and see you in another time